In this following video, we're going to take our top-down layout and use that as a template to block in our gameplay BSP inside the editor. To get the full benefit of going through this process, I highly recommend that you read through and understand the process of how to design gameplay map layouts. The two tutorials that you should uh, read through, this one in uh, how to design gameplay map layouts, uh, the in-depth guide, as well as the six principles of choke point level design. And I wanted to create a very simple layout for this tutorial. And the idea that I had was a, some sort of a, a downtown urban setting. So I started to sketch out and draw ideas of what that may look like. So I kept it very simple. Again, just using main paths and few connected paths. So any ideas, any thought that I had that I, I may want to include, I just put it down on paper. So with each drawing and sketch that I did, I kind of began to get a more clear understanding of what uh, the gameplay layout that I wanted to create. And I ended up coming up with this layout. Uh, this is what we're going to use as a template to start with. You can see that this layout has only two main paths. Both of those main paths lead to a choke point right before the bomb sites. Open up Hammer and let's start a new map. File, new. And let's go ahead and save this first. Save as. And I'm going to save it as layout to BSP01. Go ahead and click save. So first we need to create a ground floor. So I'm going to change the texture to a developer texture. So I'm going to click on browse and dev. So you can choose any of these you want. I'm going to use the dev measure generic grid texture. So double click to set it. Choose the block tool. Notice that I try to work on the 32 grid when I'm blocking this in. And let's draw out a ground floor. So 256 by 256 is a good start. So let's go ahead and find that in a 3D view. If you can't quite find it in the 3D view, make sure it's selected. And go to view and center 3D on selection. And now we can see it. Since I like to start off with the attacking team first, I want to make sure that when I design, it's a lot more easier for me in the top view to build up as I have my top-down layout. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that in the perspective viewport, I'm looking at it the same way. So I need to be right over here. So my top view and perspective view now align. So let's go ahead and place a scale reference. This will help us to judge the scale of our world a lot better. I'm going to go to the Entity tool. The default is Info Player Terrorist. That's good. I'm going to just insert him in here. And make sure he faces the direction towards where I'll be building the map from. I'm just going to raise him up 16 units. Now we get a sense of how large this cube is. And we can just begin to block in the layout from top side, from top view a lot better. So let's go ahead and just begin to use our top-down layout and start off with the T side and then just expand on the paths as we see in the top-down layout. So I went ahead and sped up this video about four times faster than the usual normal speed uh, because I want you to get the sense of the process and see how uh, the workflow is. So what I did is I took the same ground floor and I'm duplicating uh, the same uh, ground floor and resizing that brush. So this uh, process is very fast. I'm not worried about using uh, any height variation within the layout as of yet. Uh, so I'm uh, re referring back to the drawing a lot. I'm trying to get uh, the same idea that I had in the top down layout sketch and translate that into the editor. One of the things is, uh, in the final map, I do want to have a uh, height variation. Uh, there are a couple of spots in the map uh, that I want to, uh, the player will be going up the stairs, and there are sections of the map that I want them to go down the stairs. So the Z height variation in the map is uh, very important to me in the, in the gameplay. So I want to do that, but that's going to happen after I time everything out. And as I'm designing this, uh, I already know what the environment, uh, which uh, map sections this environment is going to have. 
I already collected all the reference uh, so I have a sense of idea of uh, what this environment is going to look like so on the left hand side uh, it's going to be an interior uh, office area and on the right hand side is going to be uh, exterior a uh, back alley and the back alley I want to uh, players to go down the stairs and when they're inside the uh, interior they're going to be going up the stairs so it's good to have reference of what you're going to create this top-down process is going to be a lot faster when uh, you have photo reference to go off of and you know which section of the map uh, what they are so I just placed this CT spawn point to define the area where CTs will spawn I'm not going to place every spawn point because this layout is going to change. My next step is to go in and place where the bomb sites are going to be. Put a skybox so we can quickly compile, jump on the map and time out our choke points and our arrivals to the bomb sites. So let's go ahead and put uh, define the markers where the bomb sites are going to be. So I'm going to use overlays. I'm going to go browse and let's type in site and I'm going to use this A for the first one the first bomb site is going to be right here and the choke point leading up to it from the CT side is right here this hallway this is a single entrance choke point let's go ahead go into the actual overlay and uh, let's uh, increase the size of it here's one and the second bomb site is going to be right here. This bomb site has two entrance choke points. So let's go ahead and browse, choose B, and go and apply overlay and click right here. Let's go in top view. Let's increase it. Next we need to insert a skybox, an environment light and an environment cube map and I compile before we can start testing and timing our choke points. First one is environment cube map. This will make all the reflections render in the map properly. So choose the entity tool and type in cube map. I'm going to place one right here. And the second one is light environment. This is the skylight. Uh, this is not the way you would light the environment. Uh, when you are focusing on lighting of the map but to get the map compiled fast for you to jump in and start testing you need this with a few basic options enabled so you can see the skybox being reflected so place this inside your map let's go into properties by double clicking on the light environment now instead of just trying to figure this out on your own i like to use the sky list that's provided for counter strike global offensive with all the skyboxes and all the light environment properties given to you. So I'm going to choose Inferno. This is a well lit daytime map and I'm going to use these properties and just plug them in. So for pitch, yaw and roll, I'm going to grab this. For pitch, minus 55. For brightness, let's copy and paste in the brightness and for ambiance copy and paste right in here and for sun spread angle I'm going to change this to 2 click apply alright now let's get a skybox going I'm going to click on browse and set the texture to sky and scroll down on the very bottom we have skybox double click now I'm going to create using the black tool I'm going to surround this entire map with this block and then I'm going to hollow this out. So let's go on the side view and let's just extend it. Make sure that everything is inside. Click enter to finalize it. So now I'm going to select it, go to tools, make hollow and 32 is okay. Normally you don't want to hollow out your uh, geometry and this is not how you would build a skybox. This is actually very bad for your map and how optimized your map will be. But for the purpose of testing this quickly, we need to get something going. And I don't want to spend the time to building up the walls and making this an optimized map. This comes way later. 
So now we have all the necessary entities to get the map compiled and run inside the game. Let's save, run map. I'm going to run BSP on normal and viz and red on fast. Click OK. So the compiling process is going to take just a few minutes. So here's our compiled map. It launches. Let's go into Terrace Team so we can test this side first. Uh, I'm going to go into console first and kick the bot on the other side. We needed that spot so we can switch teams and test from the other side. But we don't need the bot in the game. And then let's uh, MP warm up. Kill the warm up. And then we going to use mp underscore restart game to start a new additional round so once we do that we're going to use the knife out so we can run fast and we're going to start timing ourselves towards the choke point and seeing how long this takes for the terrorist team to reach so here for the first choke point it takes about seven to eight seconds uh, that's already too quick for me i don't like uh, the terrorist team to reach that choke point uh, under 10 seconds. So let's test out the second choke point. So I'm gonna run and look at the timer and right about 7 seconds. This is a long choke point good for sniping and again this takes about 7 seconds to reach. Uh, that's too fast for me. If you look at any of the official maps that it takes 10 to 15 seconds to reach uh, some of the choke points. So let's switch to the CT side and uh, test the timing of the choke points from uh, from CTs. Right, I'm going to test the B side first. So I'm going to choose the shortest route. Knife out. Notice the timer. And about 7 seconds. The timing is good, but again, too quick. And let's test out the A side. We reach the bomb site at about 7 seconds and we see the choke point and we reach the actual choke point in about 10 to 11 seconds. So after that first initial run, after we constructed the ally out, we can already see that we have issues with timing, that it takes way too fast from spawn for both teams to reach the choke point. They reach A a little bit too late compared to the T side. So we're going to need to change the layout and expand it a little further, adding a little bit more distance from spawn and redefining our paths a little bit more. So I'm gonna go into this groups, click on auto and turn off the skybox. I sped up this video about 300% and now I'm going through the refinement and updating the layout process based on the time and feedback. Um, I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to show you before and after because you don't need to see what I'm doing uh, right now uh, it's more of the same of what we did before uh, all I'm doing is just beginning to extend and update the layout to uh, give them a little more time uh, for the both teams to reach the choke points so here's the modified layout let me show you the before and after where we started and where we ended up here's what we had and this is what I ended up with so I extended the spawn points for both teams and pushed them back a bit making the left hand side route to the choke point a lot longer and I added a few additional modifications to the path. I also condensed the connecting path for the T side before the choke points. On the right hand side you can see that I also extended before what we had and after making the route towards the B choke point a little longer a little more refined. On the CT side I changed the connecting paths between the sites so I modified those routes as well as I modified the paths that CTs get from spawn to A and to B so this is before and this is after so for the final test let's jump in and see how the timing is in game so I'm going to go back to auto turn on the skybox we need to make sure that the skybox uh, is surrounding the entire map so let's go ahead compile and jump inside the map let's do our timing test I am right now on key side and I'm going to restart the game and run towards uh, side A on the left hand side 
and here we are takes about 10 seconds to reach let's do the right hand side towards B here we are we reached the choke point at about 10 seconds uh, but to, to get to the actual site will take a little longer but we'll be able to see the CTs at about 10 second mark at this choke point let's switch teams so let's start the CT side I'm gonna rush towards the left hand side towards uh, B about 9 to 10 seconds to reach B and then to see the T's on the other side and this is pretty good we'll be able to defend this position before the T's can get here A site on the right hand side 8 seconds to reach A site and about 11 to 12 seconds to reach the, uh, the choke point for our last timing position I'm going to start at 30 seconds and rush to see what the distance is between two bomb sites. The timing of the C4 timer in a tournament or league play is 35 seconds. Here we are, we reached it to 15 seconds. So you want to calculate the position between bomb sites to under 20 seconds at max, at the shortest distance. At this stage we are done with the layout phase of the map. The timing of the choke points and the objectives is pretty good. And in the next video I'm going to begin to make this map alpha ready. What I'm going to do is I want to include some height variation, some Z axis of this layout. I don't like flat maps so I am going to use the left hand side side A uh, this is going to be the interior of the environment and I'm going to raise this up so I'm going to build up some stairs and bring everything higher this is the back alley exterior of the map I'm going to bring this down so I'm going to add some stairs that will lead down towards the back alley I will then begin to add some walls and define the environment and make it more playable I'm going to add more gameplay elements such as buy zones CT spawns, T spawns, and bomb zones. What I want to do is get this map to a stage where I can get feedback from playtesters. I will want to get this layout as close to player friendly. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next.